we go. Got a good hand now. We can keep that. Pretty happy with this hand. So we got a trium. We got the sultide trium. So and then we land go basically. So we expect Soul Tie. Probably some Beanstalk variant. So we're we're just happy. So happy to be here chilling. All right. So we're gonna play land. And we'll play sleepy. Fetches, that's for sure. Could be playing Living End, could be playing you know, just a lot of things. So. so we untap, we take this. Alright. We're going to go ahead and grab an island. So. And this is why we this is why we do this stuff. <laughs> uh, we won our land here, so we're just gonna play that. So he's gonna fight over this. Um, and we, you know, so more likely he's playing like. Like to America Troll, which this is going to. So, what is he? Yeah, this is War 2. So, yeah. <laughs> he did it. He didn't read the card very well, did he? Um, I'm totally cool with that for that resolving. Or not resolving, but. Because we don't draw a card if the cost is paid, an opponent draws a card. Yeah, I think the ability. The card has to go off for me to draw there, I believe. So I think he's playing just some kind of soul tie control, which is cool. It's fine with us. Um, question being is, how much green is he playing? So we're going to kind of keep that out for now. We are going to bring in our edicts. I think the removal is, but not the damnations. And the pithing needle will be on standby. We just how creature heavy is he? That's our question. And if he is here, we can take out some of the pushes. 
And then, actually, we can keep out all the pushes. We'll just bring in this, and our removal package will be fairy fencing and edict. And, yeah, I think we go there. So I can also choose to, like, go to be the aggressive deck here. Um, and just bring in Dolphys. And we'll try that next turn uh, when we're on the play. No, we weren't on the play. We were on the draw the first game. So, so him. So this is where uh, Sleeper's Fairy gives people problems. Is they just, you know, they they have a removal spell and it's really cool and it's really cool. Oh yeah, I can just at least I can take this out, you know, with all the mana I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I like about Sleepers Fairy, is it when when you're playing like really really stringent magic, um, and they they want to do something they just they just can't, and it's just really nice. So we just lane go. So we shock ourselves. I could have played Island, but we're going to end up. We're going to end up shocking ourselves next turn anyway, so it's not really that big a deal. He knows we have Snare. He didn't see a Bitter Blossom come down, so he doesn't really know. Um, okay. And we have a we have Force Negation, so but we have to slam the Blossom. We don't really have a choice. We do have a choice, but slam if the Blossom resolves. We are extremely happy. Now, he has many things he can do. He can untap, play Abrupt Decay. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff he can do to remove this. As He is playing green. So he could be playing Urza Saga. He could play Haywire Might. You know, there's just a lot of things for him to do. So he says... He has stuff. Ashiok. Um... We're actually not too concerned about this. Like, we are, but we're not. And we have this. So, okay, he's going to mill us. And he's going to plus here. So, the problem with this card... I love this card. I used to play it a long time ago. I really did. The problem with this card is that it doesn't impact the board immediately. You have to plus it, and then you have to minus it. Okay, that sucks. So we basically, our next three draws were really good. So it was more counterspell, which we're good in this scenario. Um, but even Bitter Blossom doesn't do anything the turn it comes down. And But so the turns afterwards are where, are where it really, really matters. So... Um, so I can get rid of this now, which is probably what I should do. We'll just go ahead. Well, or I could wait for his turn, but if I do that, then I'm fighting a counter spell. We'll just get rid of it now. So. So I'll probably grab a black source with this, possibly. Like a, a grave. Probably don't have to, but. It definitely has to be a blue source. So it plays land. Um, but the problem with this is, like, so you can't at negative X the second ability immediately. And you obviously can't ultimate. So here's here's the Assassin's Trophy. Um, so, yeah, he is... So Assassin's Trophy is just really nice. So Oh, I could have got rid of... Oh, it's not... Oh, uh, we can get the land. I probably should have countered that. Oh well. That's a mistake by me. I thought it was Abrupt Decay. I, I was sitting here talking about Abrupt Decay. I was like, oh, there's the Abrupt Decay. Oh, it's Assassin's Trophy. Duh. But at least I get land out of it. We'll, we'll probably still win here. So, But that's a perfect snare opportunity that was missed. We're going to win. We're going to win with our fairy. So, 
luckily, against control mashups, we can make that mistake a little bit. We do have an easier... Um, we have an easier time with control than we do with uh, aggro and other other decks. Like, him playing this draw-go game, we just play this better than he does. And um, he he's playing more of a green, kind of the rock build, which is built on one-for-ones. And it's not that we don't play kind of the same game. We just have more... We have more things going on, basically. So... Than he does. So this opt... Um, we're going to attack, and then we're just going to cast the opt. Um, might, we could do it during his turn. Um, yeah, we can do it during his turn. Because... If we do it during his turn, then he can counter it, sure, but, you know. Or we can wait for him to tap some kind of mana here, because it seems like we're going to have to uh, do something. So, Art Mage's turn. He wants to draw two cards. So, this is what this wants to do all the time. So, he... Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and counterspell it. Really doesn't mean much, so so we, he's playing um, Shadow of Doubt too. So we have to kind of worry about that when we fetch a little bit. Probably should have fetched as soon as this came down to make him um, get rid of those cards. So we're gonna go ahead and fetch here. So obviously he has that, and we have. The other island. The other island's in the, uh, in exile. We'll do this. And then, so I can't get that, so this is gonna be a swamp. Alright. So I'm not gonna use the opt. So I kinda screw. I didn't screw it up, it's fine. Because if I would've opt, I would've gotten this and could've played that. So. So I would have had three or four fairies right now if I would have countered that. So we would have been like winning heavily. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing here. So we would have been in the driver's seat. So, but I wouldn't have had an extra land either. So we'll just go ahead and snare this. So that's the good thing about him. He's playing a lot of two mana cast and cost uh, spells, so Snare is going to be up and available all the time. And you know, when they when they play decks that are good for spell Snare, we you know we can win the mana the mana war most of the time. So we'll just go ahead and opt here. If he wants to counter this, sure. Yes, we'll get the drown. It's a very good pickup. And then we'll get a card deeper. We now have Tar Pit if I want to fire it up, but we don't right now. And then we would have had five on the board. Uh, five fairies. This would have been just GG. So, you know, one little mistake kind of puts us behind. I think we can still win this game. I don't think it'll be a problem, but... Um, as you can see, it really... It takes the... Uh, takes our advantage completely away for them to do that we have to rebuild something so, but we have we have tons of ways to do that now so we'll go ahead and I gotta make sure that I can because this will come down as a black so I need to tap this so we're gonna sprite this He's doing at this end of mine. So what he was trying to trying to do is probably Archmage's Charm. Because he wants to constantly draw two cards off. This is his draw engine in his deck. So, so he constantly wants to just draw cards off this one and really doesn't want to use any other mode. If he's using other modes on it, it's uh it's kind of bad. 
so the other modes are just kind of situational here. Yeah, so we're going to I'll counterspell that. Yep. So I could play the force, which is probably the better idea here. Oh, I can't play the force. Yeah, I can. Let's do this. Yeah, playing the force, I think, is actually the best thing here. Get basic swamp. Because that other island goes here, it really uh, kind of affects us. We'll just hard cast this, exile it. I actually thought about just force negation this, just in case he has uh, something else. So see, like, he's just playing this slow, grindy rock deck with blue in it. And this is why he never two for ones us. He never, never gets advantage any other way. He's playing friends, so he's playing Ashiok plus Jace, the White Sculptor. I'm sure he's playing some other kind of Planeswalker kind of control here. It just doesn't work out for him very well. The Ashiok only is good against creature based decks. We are not that. This should have came out. Uh, like I said, it doesn't affect the board when it first comes in to play, just like a Bitter Blossom. But also, it's even longer. The only thing he really did was exile three cards off the top of my library. Yes, I could have done that, but he would have just kept, kept doing that, kept doing that. Like, there are better ways. Even the the Ashiok Planeswalker that doesn't allow you to search libraries, like, that card is better than this card. It just is. And it's unfortunate that it is, but, I mean, you just have to think of it that way. Um, the card doesn't do enough for this format. It has to do something. Bitter Blossom, the only reason we play it is because we have to, pretty much. Or, you know, it's our win con. But at least after a turn or two, it's there. This takes three or four turns to get going, and that's why you'll never see Ashiok going anywhere. It won't be a, it won't be a staple, basically. Oh man, something's in my eye. So that's what we see there. Um, you know, Soul Tide Control, it's fun. It just isn't. The reason why Soul Tide Control works in Legacy and doesn't work in Modern is because uh, Legacy Soul Tide Control has. Um, they play Sharpless Agent, which is basically a two for one for you. So it's like a two for zero. You know, you're going to go find something, you're going to put something in play for free. So you're, you're playing two spells for the cost of one. And then and then on top of that, you're playing um, you're playing like Hymn of Turok, which is your opponent discards two cards at random and you pay two mana. That's a two for one. So you're you're getting this incremental advantage over over a couple turns. Well we don't have Hymn of Turok. So and if you want to play the creature version of Hymn of Turok and get the same result. That's four mana. Four mana in modern is just unacceptable. It better win you the game. And the creature form of him, Turok, doesn't um, do that quite as easily. 